This live stream is presented to you by Max Speed TV. All live streaming content that is presented in this telecast is owned by Max Speed TV, Rudy Cummings, and the entire crew of MSTV. This may not be rebroadcasted, retransmitted, and retelevised without written consent. Please enjoy today's broadcast. Everybody for tonight's broadcast here for this one we're gonna twist it up a bit rather than going with our casual commentating uh, we're gonna drag in a couple of drivers here for tonight's race getting set for the finale of the new uh, new Smyrna Speedway my name is Ezekiel Reyes I'm Matthew Coyne I'm Charlie Byer I'm Joe Berge and I'm Hunter Up. I won't be your four commentators here for tonight as we get set for, uh, looks like, I think, 80 laps here at the New Smyrna Speedway. Well, guys, first time you guys ever in the booth. Uh, I think Charlie's second time, of course, we had the Drivers Only broadcast at, I think it was Bristol, was the last time we did this. But, yeah, uh, glad y'all could do in and, uh, and join us in here for tonight's uh, fun event. And as we get set for tonight's championship round, um, of course, uh, this being the final race, uh, I'm decided to crown not only a winner, but a champion here for tonight. Uh, who do you think is going to come out of top of points? Uh, we'll actually pull it right now, where everybody sits. Well, um, I am buying money on Eric Sutcliffe. He's the point clear coming in, and he's been fast all weekend. Yeah, Eric does uh, does have that uh, a little bit of a cushion over Aaron Maroney, and obviously uh, less of a cushion over Alex K. Grades, but as long as he runs up front, as long as he runs up front, gets a good qualifying spot, uh, I think he'll sh he should be able to pull it off. Yeah, a little bit. Eric Sutcliffe does have a chance of getting this championship, but I am going to say that's going to be Aaron Mulrooney. Alex K. Greats is not here currently, and Aaron is definitely one of the best at the plate, or er, not the plate tracks, the short tracks. And he's coming in here with two wins compared to Eric's, Eric Sutcliffe's zero. But Aaron is about nine points behind him, so he's going to have to be in front of Eric to be able to get this championship. You know what, guys? I think I'm going to mix it up a little bit and go with Scott Yost. I know he is 10 points back off of uh, Sutcliffe there and uh, obviously one point off of Paul Rooney, but uh, Scott Yost, I don't know if I'm the only one who notices this, but uh, it seems he has an uncanny ability of just being there at the right price and the right time. So if something goes wrong for the two guys' battle here, I think he's going to have something for him. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, definitely. He's uh, another one to be watching for. That 85 picked up the victory at Southern National Motorsports Park. He's setting to go for another one here for tonight. But our fastest in practice, that number two of Aaron Mulrooney. And he's going to have a good shot coming in here. But Eric Sutcliffe's going to be in third. Oh, looks like I think he's in third place. But ATVO is freezing fourth. right now. so He's um, currently fourth. Yeah, currently on. fourth right now. But yeah, um, currently two minutes left in qual uh, not qualifying practice. Uh, Rather than championship-wise, who do you think is going to come up uh, up top here for tonight's race? Um, I'm going with Hunter Johnson. He's second fastest on the board, and he can really wheel a car. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to go with the uh, fastest on the board right now, number two of Aaron Mulroney. Uh, he's shown a lot of speed in these late models and the super late model series uh, last season, so... Um, I think uh, I think he'll definitely run up front tonight and also give him a bit of bonus points, which will uh, close the gap even more to that championship lead. I'm going to have to agree with Charlie Byer on that. Aaron Maroney is fast on this track, especially on any of the uh, short tracks here. This seems like one of his playgrounds, and I feel like he's going to go for the double, the win, and the championship. Well, I did say Scott Yost was going to get it done, so uh, I think he'll also need to win to do that so he can get those bonus points he close in on uh, Sutcliffe and uh, Mulrooney, so uh, I'll also pick him for the race for today. Yeah, for me, that number 12, Hunter Johnson, he's not really far off that, uh, not really far off in practice, so I expect that number uh, 12 to maybe pick up the victory here tonight and maybe upset that number 2, not only out of a win, but maybe out of a championship. We'll have to see, though. 
meantime, 30 seconds in uh, practice left as of right now. Mulroney with the fastest time of a 17.910. Um, Hunter Johnson with a 17.922. Scott Yost with an 18 second lap time, 18.129. Eric Sutcliffe there as well with an 18.133. Practice is rounding itself out. We're going to suit ourselves to the side and play the national anthem. Rise up, remove your hats as we salute our nation's colors. We welcome everybody back here live here for tonight's event, the finale at New Smyrna Speedway. Gonna get set to go green here in just a moment. Currently qualifying underway as drivers take their fastest to around this uh, half mile circuit. But in the meantime, um, we gotta talk about uh, some of these drivers and where they stand. Uh, currently, Eric Sutcliffe has already logged in a lap time. You see Brian C. Mullen here out on the racetrack. Scott Yo, C2 is out on track as well. See the two of Mulrooney, who's actually chopping the charts, so I think that two will actually get a bonus point for starting himself up there, so that's great for his championship run as well. Yeah, the more points, the merrier. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, have you guys raced at New Smyrna? I, I haven't raced a lot here. I only raced in the National Series. Nope. Uh, I've only... I've only done it on NR 2003, but a lot I've learned from this track is that it's very abrasive and it's actually very fast feeling. You do feel like you're going to hit the walls off of those corners and they just come up very fast. You see how abrupt the change is between turn and straightaway on the outside wall there as we go on board with Scott Yost. Yeah, I, I did a few laps of testing with this car and track combination. Um, that... That front stretch wall will bite you if you get too close to it, because it jets out, and if you hit it, you're done for. Yeah, you don't want to lose that flare. Yep. Yeah, definitely. This is one of the very interesting characteristics of New Smyrna Speedway. That front stretch wall is not really uh, perpendicular with a back stretch. Um, if I rewind on Scott Yost's lap, hopefully. Um, We'll get a we'll get a viewpoint of it, but you see that backstretch wall it's straight as Mulrooney heads himself down into the front straightaway. We'll pause the screen right there, and that's what the wall looks like on the front stretch. You could out track it a bit more off yeah, number four. It's a bit weird, honestly. I I've never seen a track like that, but I guess they got lazy on the front. Uh, I want to hit up a couple um, engineers about that one. Looks like they got a dent in it and just never fixed it. Yeah, uh, like a road course. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the one thing about a lot of the the one thing about a lot of these Saturday night short tracks is that they do have that uh you see on the outside wall there there's that uh pit, pit road exit wall there. That means that it is a little bit more lenient if you do slide out a lot, but you are going to have to basically stop if you get up there. But uh that's one thing that can save you if you do end up sliding out or spinning. Yeah. You know, something that just that I just fig uh, that I'm just looking at with this track cuz this is personally my f first time looking at this track. It's it reminds me of the USA International Speedway, except with a little more banking, and it actually doesn't have a dent in the front wall. 
Um, and I have a feeling there it's going to drive really similar to that because a lot of car or a lot of um, races at the USA International Speedway they can get a little hectic with everybody trying to get down to the bottom and even though that doesn't exactly have a dent in the front in the front stretch wall um, you can expect probably some carnage even with a small field such as this yeah I definitely agree with that um it actually might be just about like a twin of uh, USA. I, I don't know how big USA is. Uh, I think it's like 0.675 miles. Uh, New Smyrna is half a mile in length. But in the meantime, qualifying has rounded itself out. Congratulations to Aaron Mulroney to round himself on the pool. That'll gain him an extra bonus point, as Matthew said. Get set here for tonight's grid. Uh, starting order is going to be shown on the bottom of your screen pick your favorite driver and hopefully he'll win it here for this one I'll place your bets we already placed stars before qualifying happened um, in the meantime this championship picture is about to get twisted here for 80 laps so hopefully everybody yeah, can enjoy tonight's broadcast honey you got something to say uh, yeah I just looked it up uh, yeah this is the shortest track that we go to on the schedule I believe uh, most of the other tracks are a little over half a mile or 0.75, such as, you know, USA, Martinsville, those tracks, uh, a little bit bigger than this one. Uh, so this is the shortest track, which means a lot of close racing action tonight, and it should be a uh, very fun one. Uh, Something I'm just realizing right here, this is a little bit surprising to me, actually. Look who's in fourth, and look who's in sixth. George Tolsman, the number 25, and Harry Grindel in the number 70. Harry Grindel is... Definitely one of the short track masters on this series, but that's a little surprising to see him back in sixth, and especially George in the 25. He's kind of late in the back, but he seems to be pretty decent, uh, have a bit of decent pace here. So I actually want to see how he does here tonight. Yeah, yeah he's I... coming up. Oh, good. Oh, uh, sorry. Well, no, go ahead. George Tolzma was running pretty fast in testing. I was watching him earlier today. He was. He was lapping around 17.9, 17.8. I think he got even a 17.7 once, but he's he's looking pretty fast. I'm surprised he didn't qualify on the front row. Yeah, he's coming out fresh off of a van. He's still trying to get some people uh, back on his uh, list of people to trust. But uh, he's if he can pull this off, he's certainly uh, looking uh, very strong for uh, next season, even when we uh, do modifieds instead. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it to you. Good luck out there in the broadcast. Seven drivers going to lead to the green. Here we go for 80 laps. The pace car is going to pull off the raceway. The two-car Ram Rooney will flag. lead them to the green flag, and we are underway here. Oh, oh look look the already around. Off the back Off of the nose. number 70. No caution. Yeah, That's no, going to be there. a bit controversial right there. I'm sorry, Hunter, for cutting you off, but I'm just going to say this real quick. Ha um, Harry Grindel into the back of the number 25. That might stir up a little bit of a rivalry again. Yeah. Yeah. But um, well, Rooney has a pretty big gap over uh, Tolzma. I mean, not Tolzma, uh, Johnson here. Excuse me, uh, that is actually uh, Eric Sutcliffe in the number 76 for Team Kamikaze. That's in third. Uh, Harry Grindel is in fourth. Um, very hard to see because they have very similar paint schemes, which I really hate them for, but <laughs> either way, both drivers are fast, and actually speaking of that, I know I, I mentioned this before the broadcast came back on, Team Kamikaze is running for the Team, team Standings Championship. They're 11 behind Proximity Racing, and I'm pretty sure if they both get a good finish tonight, they are going to be at the top of the board. Yeah, now yeah, the Proximity going. cars are uh, in the field, so... <laughs> They could run away with it. Uh, yo, oh! oh! Harry Grindel oh, into the wall out of four! Hard hit. That that side is all torn up. Yeah. Scott Yost into good. the fourth spot. That doesn't look good for Grindel. He has yeah, a lot of damage. The, back to the team stands. I believe the 12 of Hunter Johnson is listed with Park Simon. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. So oh, yeah. He has competition in the car to beat tonight for those uh, two Kamikaze racing cars. But... He's currently sitting solid second, inching closer to the back bump of Ailman Rooney for the race lead, and we'll see where it goes from there. 
on board the number two of Aaron Mulrooney John er, Jr., not Johnson, my bad. As uh, we're going on the lap six out of 80 here, Hunter trying to go to the high side a little bit. Uh, yeah, I see. Yeah, he's trying to dime in the corner, get that run off. So uh, that's probably going to be the only way he's going to be able to pass him on the straightaway. I don't think they'll be able to get him on the corner here. And those yeah. two don't have anybody else to worry about. Look at how far back Eric Sutcliffe is, but I think he might be able to catch up. This is only lap eight out of 80, might I add. So he still has the chance to get back up there if there is a caution. Yeah, these two are gone from everybody else. I mean, they have way superior setups. As long as Sutcliffe finishes in the top three, he should be the champion as well. I think he's just riding around just to just claim the championship. Uh, I'd have to check how many uh, points are awarded for each position, but yeah, uh, Mulrooney obviously getting those uh, bonus points from the pole, and if he wins the race, that's even more bonus points, so I mean, it could be yeah. close. Yeah. We're noticing Scott Yost kind of gaining a little bit on the 76 of Eric Sutcliffe, as it looks like Hunter Johnson, oh, as he blinks out a little bit. Yeah. Kind Still of taking that one. Kind of gaining a little bit on Hunter or on Aaron Mulrooney, excuse me. As uh, looks like he's setting up for a pass, but not really sure on that, especially because uh, keeps freezing. But that's uh, my own fault. So, oops. Well, wonder if yeah. that 12 is saving more tires than the two as well, because uh, keep in mind, it's if we don't go get a caution, they're gonna have to save the crap out of those tires in order to have something uh, at the end here. Yeah. So uh, I think it's just a, right now a uh, battle between both the driver you're battling, obviously, and then yourself, so you don't over push the car and, you know, burn the tires. As uh, uh, Hunter Johnson gets the inside. Hunter Johnson down to the inside, going into three. He's going to make the pass on Aaron Mulrooney, and he's going to lead this lap. He's going to take the lead away from the number two car. And that is huge for the points. Something I keep yeah. looking out for as uh, Hunter kind of cuts down in front of Aaron. I keep looking at the intervals right there. Harry and George. Har uh, yeah, Harry is losing a little bit of time from uh, Brian Mullen, but George is gaining a little bit on him. You might want to watch out for that because especially after that lap one incident, George is definitely not going to be happy with that number 70 car. Yeah. Rightfully and so. 70 has a lot of damage. I'm surprised he hasn't pit yet. That right front has to be a screw. Might have. Let's check. Let's try to check back on uh, the third and fourth place battle. Uh, Eric Sutcliffe and Scott Yost. You can see Scott almost at the bumper of Eric Sutcliffe. Um, don't know if he's kind of saving back or not. I think I saw him a little bit on the bumper of Sutcliffe, but I'm not going to be too sure about that. Scott seems incredibly fast here. Uh, just not able to get the move around to Eric, and I don't. He might be able to get up to Maruni and Hunter. I think they're actually gaining on them a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah if if uh, Scott Yost does get by this uh, 76 here, it won't directly affect his championship fight, but that helps the two massively. That's another couple of points that are taken away from that uh, number 76 car. And keep in mind, the gap was nine points going in. So, and Mulrooney has also led a lap. I believe that gives you a bonus point or two as well. Hunter Johnson has pulled away from the number two of Aaron Mulrooney. Charlie Byer, you think you have a word on this at all or anything going on? Yeah, and Hunter's showing a lot of speed, uh, obviously. So, uh, you know, differing strategies here, but obviously Mulrooney's falling back. We, uh, we don't know what's going on in his head, but uh, we could assume that he's either saving tires or, or just doesn't have the, the setup to match Hunter Johnson. So, uh, falling back a little bit, but uh, it's all the 12 car up there with uh, out of seven car length lead yeah core away through this race now he might not be worrying about the win he might just be worrying about the championship right now because he's only got eric to uh battle with right now as li like i said earlier alex k greats is not here he was second in points two points behind eric coming into this race but he is out of it aaron is the second yeah, I believe second, uh, and actually only person who actually has the chance to get past Eric. And at the moment, it looks like it might be in uh, Mulrooney's favor, but I'm not sure on that. 
Yeah, yeah, and you're contending for one of these championships, and you know that you have an opportunity to maybe come out uh, on the other side with a championship. You want to keep your car clean. You want to just just run conservatively. But people like Connor Johnson, who are a little bit further back in points, he doesn't have anything to lose. He can just go for it, race as hard as he wants. But uh, Aaron Maroney, um just kind of trying to kind of keep the right side of that car clean and, and uh, trying to make it to the end. Yeah, and uh, for that two car, he still has another, what, 57 laps to not only reel this 12 car in, but uh, try to extend his gap on the uh, 12 car. A huge thing in the points right now is Yost has gotten by that uh, number 76 of Eric Sutcliffe finally. So uh, that'll help uh, Mulrooney in the points. Again, won't really help Yost, but Mulrooney's probably uh, in, in the back of his mind thinking uh, that 85 is going to Yost for that one. Yeah, definitely. I'm not sure that Mulroney has the championship if he does win, because there's not a lot of cars on the racetrack. Well, there's, only, just... there's only seven cars, so... Yeah, if, a lot of it depends. Okay. If that 76 was to wreck out, I think he would still have the championship based on points. But yeah, a lot I'm not of it, sure. A lot of it is based off of uh, where that... Uh, 76 of Sutcliffe finishes the worst day he has the better of a shot Mulroney has he already has that whole bonus locked in but uh that might not be enough if uh he finishes a second and uh Sutcliffe finishes in fourth you look on the interval uh George Holsma did finally get around Harry Grindel is actually Harry Grindel right there in the shot uh, Harry, that damage definitely affecting him. I don't know if uh, George made contact with him or anything. I would not be surprised if he did because Harry uh, kind of gave him a booty in the uh, rear. That made no sense, but uh, moved him out of the way on the first lap, uh, shoved him from fourth to sixth, and I would not be surprised if George was mad about that. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. You can see the difference uh, in damage versus no damage, even at these short tracks. Again, Having that aerodynamic damage can affect you a lot because your car simply just cannot turn into the corner as well as everybody else. You see that wheel actually exposed on that number 70 uh, Team Kamikaze machine of Harry Grindel as the leaders come up on. Yeah, that might, even that might not be good for the uh, team championship. Sorry, Klein, I didn't mean to uh, interrupt you, but... That's fine. Yeah. Even though that we're running so low with speeds, we're only getting up above like 110, barely. Drag and downforce plays a lot into these cars handling. With that wheel exposed, that produces a lot of drag, which in turn slows the car down. On top of that, if he hits the wall, that could, since that wheel is exposed a little bit, that could, uh, if he does hit the wall, could affect this car a lot more because the uh, Sometimes if you have a wheel exposed on a uh, whole lot of racing, uh, sometimes your car just wants to ramp that wall a little bit. But uh, as we go on board with Harry Grindel, you see that 12 Camry of uh, Hunter Johnson is just so hooked up, breezes right by the 7th. We'll look back on the last time we came here to New Smyrma. Uh, James Youngman was actually the one that won this race, and surprisingly, Harry Grindel got second here. Uh, this was, uh, I believe I'm looking at the right race. Yes, I am looking at the right race. This was, uh, the Super Late Model Series. Um, I'm so, I'm honestly surprised Harry isn't doing as good. I mean, then again, he did kind of, uh, bash the wall on, I believe, lap two, or get put in the wall, so... A little bit surprising, a little bit unfortunate, because I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been surprised considering um, the finish he had last uh, time he raced here. He was uh, very close to winning. Yeah, Grindel, uh, the first and probably not the last car to get bit by that uh, front stretch wall. As uh, Kibboy talked about the pre-race show, you, you can see kind of a little bit on this camera how it just shots out like that and then spikes back inward. It's hard for these drivers to judge whether it's going to hit the wall or not. There's Mulrooney getting around the 70 of Harry Grindel. Finally, yeah, Harry, I mean, not Harry, uh, Aaron kind of pulling away, or not pulling away. I'm not doing good right now. I keep forgetting where everybody is. Uh, getting not as good of a run anymore as he did on the first couple of laps. Hunter Johnson 
pulling away from number two, but never know. Maybe maybe uh, maybe it's about strategy tonight. Just to add on on Matthew Klein's thing. Sorry to go ahead and interrupt by me. Oh, looks like Hunter Johnson's coming in. What in the world is this? Uh, is he retiring from the race? Not or sure. Is he just I, I don't know tires? if he because he's pitting halfway. I'm not sure if he is. This uh, might be. This might be a part of that strategy we just talked about. He might be thinking of one at the moment. He might be trying to undercut the number two. Oh, we'll like save that jack. No, no, he retired. Oh, oh wait, no, 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 the jack's up on that car. I got a little worried Splinking there. You up. see him blinking out. <laughs> but uh, the air jack goes up on that number 12 uh, Camry of uh, Hunter Johnson for proximity racing. That will get hand the lead to Aramol Rooney, Scott Ghost in second. There yeah, goes. and an interesting strategy here because he did. He is cutting the run in half. He pitted on exact exactly lap 40 but the thing with these late models and super late models is these pit stops take forever as you see uh that pit timer down at the bottom of the screen it was almost at 40 seconds right now so um you know it, it's a it's tough to to try to guess what his strategy is but oh. you know, Rooney, if you just stay oh, can't make up this time no the pit box is gone he's retired from the race oh well that is strange i guess no, I just got gifted the lead official. Wow. Wow, oh, that's search. Interesting. It's the number 76, Eric Sutcliffe. If Mullery wins, he gets three bonus points. That's three points taken away from Sutcliffe's lead. Yeah, and, um, you know, if he stays leading the entire rest of the race, he will get that, uh, that bonus oh, point for leading the most laps. So, um, continuing to cut into that points lead, but Sutcliffe is just two spots back from him. Uh, I don't know how many points and positions there are, but uh, if he does lead the most laps and win the race, he might actually uh, secure the title. I don't know how big of a difference first and third is. Yeah. Maybe it could be, because I believe it's one point for a pole, one, one point for the most laps led, and three points for the win. If I'm not mistaken, no, so that would out. be five no, bonus points, and we have a record of Josh is out! Way. Yost and Harry Grindel! That's going to affect Scott Yost and Team Kamikaze. And that will move Eric, Su Eric Sutcliffe, more importantly, into the second spot, which eats away at the points uh, improvement that Mulroney was looking at making. Oh my, what happened to the number 85 and the number 70? Looks like oh he's coming my, up on very fast. He goes to the inside, couldn't get it done there. Yeah, let's see. Are you trying to block him? Maybe? I don't know. Let's see it. Oh. Didn't happen this lap. Nope. So they wrecked right on that victory lane. Yep. Oh, I think it might have been right here. Oh, sh I am not doing camera right. No, wrong way. Ah! Uh, <laughs> there we go. Technical difficulty. Oh, here it is. Yep. Okay. Uh, That's hard to judge, but uh, kind of looks like that 85 came up. Look at that. That definitely destroyed the left side of that 85. That was a hard hit. Yeah. Yeah, he comes up. up. Yeah, that he was... came right up. Ooh, hard hit to the front end. Both fenders mashed in. And every yep. single car taken hit stops. Sutcliffe in the lead. Looks like he didn't hit. Oh, look yeah. at that. Oh, George Tolsma didn't pit, but look at Brian Mullen. He comes out second in, uh, from green flag pit stops. That's interesting to see. And official word, Hunter Johnson has retired from the race officially. Yeah. I guess he didn't have that enough time or something. Strange. That is very strange to see. Wow. Uh, looks like Tolzma is coming in this time. Huh. But Sutcliffe decides to elect to stay out. As we go to lap 50 this time. That's going to shake a lot of things up right now. Sutcliffe did not pit, but Aaron did. He's going to be on fresher tires. But look yeah, at Bri I'm... look at Brian Mullen in third. I'm sorry I interrupted you there, Hunter, but Brian Mullen, he might be able to sneak a good finish in here today and might even be able to get in between those two and possibly affect one of their championships or possibly get to the lead. Yeah, if uh, 
maybe you can rely on uh, that 76 of uh, Sutcliffe uh, having a little bit of uh, really worn tires. Cause, you know, I mean, they did get half the race on him. So uh, maybe that'll hold up the two and he can just get on by. But uh, he's really not that much of a factor for the championship. As a matter of fact, I don't even think he's close to contending for it. But uh, he's one of those guys that's just out here for basically just for fun. Uh, so he'll just be going for it as the pace lights turn off on that uh, Ford Mustang case. You know, none of us actually had Sutcliffe as winning this race, but this could possibly turn it around. I'm, I may, I may jinx him right here, but I'm really hoping I don't. Scott but, Yost, if you, <laughs> go ahead. Oh yeah, he is actually back out on the track. Yeah, He's Scott Yost, coming. if you're watching, I'm sorry for jinxing you guys. The pace car gets ready to die down the road. Down we are green. Road and green flag back in the air. Gonna file single file right here. Mulrooney second. Mullen third. George Tolsma fourth. Mulrooney Already trying to out. dive down to the bottom. Oh! A little bit of a bump. Down to the 76. Down the bottom goes the two car and the 17. 17 is still right on that back bumper of that number two car as uh, side by side for second place now. It looks like that 76 is going to have to give way to that uh, 17 of Brian Mullen. Now George Tolsma into the picture in fourth place. Mullen around the inside. George Tosma might be able to make the move on the number 76 as Mulrooney is going away from the rest of this pack. Will Sutcliffe be able to get back up to the number two and possibly do the same thing he did to him a couple laps beforehand? It's going to be very difficult with those worn uh, tires, but uh, as you see, that 25 is really pressuring him now. That points leader is under pressure from uh, George Tosma, who uh, only made about half the starts this season again. Like Mullen, one of those guys out here basically for fun, but uh, looking very strong in that number 25. We didn't really get to see it that last run because obviously uh, sp spun in turn one off the back bumper, I mean off of the uh, bumper of that number 70 of uh, Harry Grindel as he goes to the inside. Down to the bottom goes the number 25. He's on those fresh tires, the 76 on the old tires, but he's not going to stop this fight. Sutcliffe down to the bottom of the number 25. He's not going to be able to make the move work. Yeah, I think those tires are starting to go away as Mulroney is just driving away. It looks like a Sunday drive for him. Literally. Yeah. Mulroney, or not Mulroney, Mullen in second as Harry Grindel's back out on the track. Mullen is kind of going away from the number 25. He could possibly get a top two. No doubt possibly a top three unless there's another caution, which I kind of doubt it. But you never know because none of us were expecting that wreck with Yost and the number 70 of Harry Grindel. But Mullen is definitely a surprise right now. I think he was about fifth or sixth in practice. He's running second right now. Uh, lap for a pair of Gundel coming into effect again. That might, uh, you know, not help that line of that number two car. But last time he just drove right past him. Uh, so it shouldn't be much of a factor. But uh, maybe Mullen can capitalize on that. He can take a little bit. Yeah. I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if Harry pulled up more in a because Harry is a teammate to Eric Sutcliffe. Nope, he's going to let nope. the number two by. It's Almost the wall, a little bit. Almost in the wall. I'll play a little bit of a brush, but nothing wrong on that number 70. At least that wasn't already wrong. And Mullen goes by now. Yeah. If Mullen can catch Mulrooney, I would be surprised, because Mulrooney has this in the bag, unless a caution comes out. Just to add on to statistics and such, uh, Sutcliffe, I think he stayed out that last restart just to lead laps and added extra bonus point to him. But unfortunately, I don't think that extra bonus point is going to play any difference because now what was a third place run has now turned into a fourth place run. Of course, with older tires, uh, it's really working out well for him. So we'll have to see how the 76 will line up. Yeah, I don't think taking that gamble was uh, the right call because uh, inevitably I think it just kind of shot him in the foot there as uh, he's starting to fall back now. Could even possibly fall back to uh, the fifth spot, which would not be good for him. Oh, never mind. The next car is Scott Yost, who is a lap down. So uh, unless he wrecks, it's physically impossible for him to finish worse than fourth at the moment. Yeah, if, gonna we, look, uh, oh, if we can display point. Uh, I'm not sure the gap. I think it's eight points. Nine points going on. Nine points. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, Sutcliffe had 50, uh, Mulroney had 41. I think Mullen might be losing a bit of time to, Mul or, yeah, to Mulrooney. And Tolsma might actually be catching Mullen right now. That might be interesting to play out as Mullen blinks out for a second. I think that gained a George a little bit of time on him. Yeah, no, that 25 is actually surprisingly hooked up. Uh, we don't talk about him a whole lot as a threat for wins, but uh, obviously... Uh, for this top two right now, I don't know if they'll have anything from Mulrooney. That that two car just looks way stronger than the rest of the field. Seems like the only car that could beat him was Hunter Johnson. Obviously, he's retired 27 laps down, as you saw on the ticker there. But uh, yeah, that 25 having a very good day. That's more than a good day. That's a great day for that number 25, George Tolsma, and and the 17. Either way, those two are definitely gonna get some some uh, good finishing positions here tonight even if it's a very low car count tonight and George Tolsma is actually on the bubble for the top 10 points he's definitely going to uh, get into the top 10 maybe even the top 7 around there I don't know about that but he's, go he's definitely going to be higher than 7th or 10th excuse me yeah really nothing to lose for I'm Let's taking a look at play. the recent race we ran at Martinsville. The most, the most points you could get from uh, for bonus points is eight. You can get eight bonus points. You get two with uh, finishing the race with zero incidents, race win, leading most laps, leading one lap, and pole position. Um, I don't know where Aaron started. I think he's yeah he started in first, he so that's a bonus first. point. He's leading laps, that's another bonus point, so that's two. Um, He's leading the most laps so far. Yeah, he, he's gonna lead most 39 laps. 39 laps. Well, he's basically so, at this well, point. If he maxes out on points, that'll put him up to... I believe that'll put him up in the if he, Yeah, if he came up... I that'll think, be a one point gap, and then plus yeah. Sutcliffe being in fourth. And plus position differences, I think that would hand Rooney the title, actually. Yeah. yeah, so Maroney with just nine laps to go, just approached, uh, well, just under nine laps to go now. Uh, looking for a, a late race championship spoiler here, so uh, that's pretty surprising. Yeah, as well. I mean, I, I guess it's a little My bad. Mullen's actually gotten a little bit of time off of George, which is very surprising. Though both of those cars not exactly speedy, but. At the moment, running second and third, Sutcliffe fourth, Scott Yost of getting involved in that wreck with Harry Grindel fifth, and Grindel himself in sixth. Those are the guys on the track. Hunter Johnson retired, and three more guys who did not make the start. Yeah, unfortunate for those guys. Some of those guys uh, actually, you know, set up a couple practice laps. Uh, weren't looking uh, too bad on pace, but uh, didn't make a start here at uh, New Smyrna Speedway. Uh, but uh, Mulrooney, looking very strong. I think he's got this one in the bag once Kosh comes out, boys. If he wins this, if he wins this championship, he will win both the super late model and the regular late model champion. So he is definitely the late model master here in Ice Car. Definitely, no doubt about it. Even if he doesn't win the championship, he is definitely a master of these cars. He's definitely a wheelman between them, or in inside of them. Excuse me. And not even just these. He's definitely he's a weekend and week out contender in the uh, cup cars, the Xfinity cars, and the trucks as well. So anything you put this guy in, he will run at the front. Yeah, this guy is a uh, de he's definitely a short track enthusiast. I'll say that right now. I I don't think I've ever been in a short track race for him with him where he hasn't won. But um, yeah, SBG that whole team loves short tracks. Probably have a good setup. I don't know, a great driver, he was a great race car, and uh, obviously he's putting that to the test today as the gap is almost two seconds now on this 30-lap uh, run. Yeah, and off of turn number four, Ayo Maruni's going to take the white flag. Wow, this race went by in a flash. Uh, I can't believe it's almost over, but Ayo Maruni came in second, just nine points back uh, from the championship leader, and is looking to max out on all bonus points, and uh, looking to take the title into three for the final time. And coming off of turn number four, past the restart zone, meet the fans that Aaron Mulrooney will win at Christian Speedway.
Brian Mullen and George Tosma getting second and third, respectively. Eric Sutcliffe in fourth, Scott Yost in fifth, Harry Grindel sixth, and Hunter Johnson seventh. About a couple laps down, and by that I mean about 20. Uh, well, I think we're going to have to wait for the points to tally up here, but I didn't see more room going on the front stretch. Uh, if I had to take a guess as to who won this title, I'd say it'd be more Rooney. George Tolzma in third. Very good day for him. My yeah. Brian Mullen in second as well. Yeah. Good day for the 17 and 25. Unfortunately, not really a, as good of a day, but not a terrible day for the number 76 of Eric Sutcliffe. Finished fourth. Scott Yost with bad luck with the number 70 of Harry Grindel involved in that one and only caution. Harry Grindel, this is definitely a race to forget for him. Finished second in the super late race um, during the regular season. Coming in here, he finishes sixth, four laps down. As, uh, did he do burnouts? I think he just I think he just pulled off the uh, track. But uh, yeah, as we wait for the uh, Dan Lisa to update, I don't know when that's going to update, but... Uh, Wait for the points to tally up here. Yeah, as we tally up points, we're going to screw ourselves to the side. Uh, play a couple of commercials as I get points set up. We'll be right back right after this. You're watching the iScar Yost Auto Sales Late Model Tour. New Samaria 80 for the Drivers Only Broadcast. We'll be right back right after this. North Carolina, where the field is rolling out for the start of today's 400 lap race on this... 0.625 mile racetrack. Here's the starting lineup on the pole from Dawsonville, Georgia, in the number nine Coors Ford qualifying at the Winston Cup race from North Wilkesboro is underway. Everybody nicely three turns number one and two as Bill Elliott has the lead and Dale Earnhardt has jumped into second position, followed by Benny Parsons and Bobby Allison. Welcome everybody back here live for tonight's event. Iscar Yost Auto Sales Late Model Tour rounds itself out here at New Smyrna. Not only have we crowned a winner, he's also our champion here for this season. And that number two of Aaron Mulrooney with the points up calculated, he beat Eric Sutcliffe by one point. Amazing by that number two of Mulrooney to not only win tonight's race, but the champion and we'll go ahead, Charlie will go ahead and take this one away, and we'll drag in that number two of Aaron Mulroney, your champion, here for tonight. Hey, Aaron, this is uh, Charlie in the MSTV booth. You got a copy with us? I do have a, co I do have a copy, Charlie. How are you doing? Well, Aaron, uh, you came in second in points, nine points back from our points leader, and uh, you succeeded maxing out on all bonus points and, and uh, beating him in the final point standings by just one point. How in the world did you do it? Yeah, our number two Sim Performance Group Esports, Evo Sim Sports, Chuck Monte Carlo SS, 
uh, was pretty good tonight. I was actually probably the second fastest car overall, but first place ended up um, not putting in the right fuel. So he had to pit under green flag conditions. And yeah, you know, things just played, played right into my hand, you know? I mean, I was able to run the past couple races, win all of them, get the pole, and get the max amount of bonus points. So I was uh, pretty happy with that finish. And uh, yeah, you know, everything just went right into an effect and all the bonus points really helped. Yeah, obviously uh, finishing with a clean car. So uh, yeah, I have to ask you, was that the strategy was to just keep the car clean and, and just make it to the ends? Because uh, I know uh, Hunter passed you pretty clean. The hour. I have to ask you if you were just trying to run conservatively or, or and just trying to make it to the end and max out on bonus points. Yeah, honestly, through that whole race, like, even in qualifying and practice, I saw that Hunter was probably right near me. So, you know, I just kind of rolled with it. I knew he was kind of faster once we got it the past couple laps. So I decided to let him by and just, you know, hope for a mistake, and it happened, and I just capitalized on it. Well, Aaron, we appreciate you coming out tonight and uh, racing the finale with us. And uh, one last congratulations to you on your championship, but... Uh... Uh, we wish you the best of luck on the off season. Before we uh, let you go, do you have any teams or sponsors that you'd like to thank? Yeah, I'd like to thank you guys for broadcasting tonight. I'm pretty sure the drivers broadcast from pretty cool on, pretty well actually on Max B TV. And I'd also like to thank Sim Performance Group Esports and Evo Sim Sport. All right, well, Aaron, uh, obviously a little bit of an off season here. So uh, until next season comes around and uh, we start to get back going again, we wish you the best of luck, man. All right, thanks. Have a good one. And that was Aaron Mulroney, uh, your race winner and champion. So, uh, I guess, uh, second place interview. We'll go ahead and drag it to 17 to Brian C. Mullen. I don't know who the next line is to interview that, him. That's me. That, yep, that, that will be Burger. Me. Yep. And I'll, we'll go ahead and drag the 17 to Brian C. Mullen in. Mullen, you got a copy with us? Uh, yeah, loud and clear. None of us were expecting you to finish where you were, honestly. You came, started 7th in the order. I believe that was last on the field. Coming out to finish 2nd. What was your mind on that on that final restart with George behind you, uh, possibly gaining a little bit? Uh, well, the thing about this race is I actually ran it using a Martinsville setup. So I knew my car wasn't as good as it could have been. But... During that restart, I knew George probably didn't have too much damage from that early spin, so I was a little worried about that. But thankfully, on the restart, I was able to get get off quick, get past uh, Eric, and then just hold on to hold on to Aaron's bumper until the end. Yeah. Um. Speaking of that, with George, I I saw he was gaining a little bit, and you were kind of falling away from Mulrooney. You held from the pr you held off the pressure from George and managed to actually gain away from him especially with that Martinsville set um it's really a surprise how do you how do you think you were going to do coming into this uh, into this race obviously i was hoping to do well but like i said with the Martinsville setup i knew it was catering to this track so i didn't really expect much i just had to hope the cards fell in my favor and fortunately they did so i was able to sneak away with a second place finish well it's nice having you in the booth man uh is there any sponsors you would like to thank before you uh you leave yeah i, I gotta thank spotify uh some point raceway and uh pretty much just alex k great actually he's the one who gave me the setup for martinsville so i guess i owe this to him too but uh yeah just just those two sponsors nothing crazy well, it was nice having you today. Congratulations for the second place finish. Uh, Brian C. Mullen in the number 17 Spotify Chevy. Thanks. Brian C. Mullen finishing out second here for this one as... Uh, oh, yeah, he's... Yeah, uh, we'll go ahead and drag in the third into the buck. Uh, into the booth. I think Klein or... Klein's going to take this one away or... Is it, uh, Me. Bro. Yeah, it's bro. And he's going to go ahead and take this one away. The booth goes George Solzma. Uh, Hey, George, you got a copy? Yes, I do. Hey, brother, uh, well, you got a third place. Uh, I'd consider it a career day. Uh, what were you thinking of at the uh, end of that one? 
Uh, honestly, we just were really thankful for the fact that we got a caution in the middle of that run there. I quickly realized in the middle of the race that I had not set up the right fuel, and so I was actually going to run out about 10 laps shy. So without that caution, we would have pretty much finished uh, laps down. Um, obviously, we didn't want to be in the position where we were wrecked on the first lap, but either way, we rallied back to third. Maybe could have been a second place car. Maybe could have tried to fight Aaron for the win. But uh, on that pit stop, we just put way too much fuel and, and knocked the balance off the car. Well, uh, as you mentioned it yourself, uh, obviously on uh, lap one, turn one, got spun off the uh, bumper of that 70 of Harry Rundell. But uh, you did rally your way back up to third. Like you said, uh, how was the car handling? Car was great. Uh, I really think, like I said, we probably could have been there to be able to handle with Aaron. Um, made just a small adjustment actually on the pit stomp there, just loosen it up just a little bit. Um, so who knows what could have happened, but like I said, we just missed on the fuel and knocked that balance way out of whack. Well, uh, before I let you go here, uh, any sponsors, people you want to thank? Uh, of course, we always got to thank Talsma Designs and, uh, Talsma Designs obviously now sponsoring the modified season next season and can't wait to get a part of that. Um, just looking forward to that. And obviously George Talsma Racing looking currently for drivers. So anybody in Icecar that needs a team, we've got a great Instagram page. Come hit it up. All right. Well, uh, good job on the third place today, brother. Thank you. George Tolzma in that number 25. We'll go ahead and scare ourselves back. I think Matthew Klein's going to take the 76 of yep. Eric Sutcliffe. It's a good thing that Steve Lee booth. Do you have a copy? Uh, yeah, I can barely hear you, though. Awesome. Well, um, you finished fourth, lost out the championship by one point. It sucks, but how is your car? How is your uh, car? Uh, unfortunately, the damage on lap one really slowed me down. Like, I feel like I could have run with Scott with a normal car, but it tightened me up, and I think I was around two tenths a lap slower than Scott. So I, I figured maybe like after the first caution, I could stay out and maybe get a bonus point, but I don't think even if I took tires, I would have finished any different. Yeah. How is it out? How is it out there with old tires? Uh, it was fine. The car was super tight from the damage, so I wasn't really concerned about keeping it together. It was just trying to scavenge as many points I could from the very get-go. Yeah. Well, losing out by one point really sucks. I mean, it. I don't know what to say. I mean, you had the championship in the bag. I yeah, it. yeah. I mean, even just like not getting incidents in the race, I feel like I easily could have zero x that race if it wasn't for the immediate four x. Um, if I had third, maybe I could have done it. There, there's a lot of things that could have gone differently, but it kind of decided from the very beginning that I probably wasn't going to win. Yeah, well, it sucks, but there's always next year. Any sponsors you would like to thank? Uh, no sponsors, just. Thank Team Kamikaze. We do a whole bunch of different stuff besides just oval racing and great people to hang out with. So just yeah. thanks to them. Well, uh, hopefully you get the championship next year. See ya. See ya. That was Eric Sutcliffe in that number 76. We'll drag him out of the booth, and we'll go ahead and drag in one more driver on in. I guess I'll go ahead and take this one because I've yet to interview another driver. But Harry Grindle into the booth, uh, finishing out six with a uh, torn-up race car, obviously involved in that first uh, that first caution. Uh, Harry, you got a copy? Yeah, I've got you. Hey, Harry, man, uh, your machine's all broken and torn up into pieces, but you... Jog yourself back to a sixth place finish, even though you were four laps down. Uh, what do you think happened there on the contact off of turn number four? I mean, uh, that's the second time that Yost had gotten into me in that race. And I was back there in the first place because on lap four, he <laughs> literally did the exact same thing in the exact same place. So my car was already totaled by that point. So I was being a little bit awkward with him. I wasn't like running him off the track or anything, but I was being awkward just to show my displeasure and. 
he went and did it again. So that's just really summed up how, not only for the late models, but my entire summer season has gone. It's been a bit lackluster, really. Yeah, man, you came close at Southern National Motorsports Park, of course, uh, coming, I don't even know what place you got there, because you got disqualified at the I got 7th. Yeah, 7th. I got 7th when all was said and done. Yeah, man, you got 7th there, uh, unfortunately, exit the season without any wins, but maybe on to next season, where are you looking forward to? Um, well, I'm not particularly sure for next season yet, obviously, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna regroup as a team after... This season, I'm extremely proud of Sutcliffe and what he's been able to do, you know. I mean, granted, he didn't quite make the championship, although he was in position. But, you know, that, that was, A, not entirely in his control with that lap one contact with uh, Tolzman trying to dive. But I'm not quite sure what's going through his head. But, yeah, that, that contact hurt his race car. And, you know, Mulrooney and Hunter Johnson are just beyond quick anyway. So, it, he wasn't really... You know, I I don't want to try and diss him or anything, but it it he wasn't going to be able to uh, put up quite a fight at his level just yet. So he's got time. But I'm extraordinarily proud of what he's been able to do. So we're going to regroup as a team. We're going to make some changes. There's a couple of things I'd like to take note of, and we're going to come back next season uh, reinvigorated, regrouped, and ready to try and take revenge for what this uh, summer season has been. All right, man. 10-4 here. Grindle rounds himself out six after starting in sixth place. Before we let you go, any sponsors you want to thank here throughout the season? Well, obviously, Kamikaze. We're, we're a team rather than necessarily just a sponsor now, which, again, I'm very proud of that fact. So huge shout-out to Kamikaze. And not only Eric, who's been driving with me, but, you know, the entire team backing us there, whether it be the team leader, Banditi, or whether it be the rest of the team back on a set of course. So they've all been so supportive and so helpful, not just on track and with racing in general, but just, you know, with personality, good people to hang out with. So huge props to them for being, you know, such a great body to lean on for both me, myself and Eric. Um, we're no sport for these, uh, for these McGann late models. We've not really, well, I've not been able to showcase the speed as well as I would have liked. Eric has done a stellar job with the setups and how he's driven this season. So those two are also team projects. Uh, we're going to be the Le Mans 24 hours is this weekend, if memory serves correctly. So preparations for that are going in a full swing. So the ice car season's and did just in time for that. All right, but uh, congratulations on rounding yourself out solidly in the late model season. And not only that, good luck out there in the 24 hours of Le Mans coming next week. Yeah, thank you very much. That was Harry Grindle rounds himself out six here tonight, and that'll be all our interviews for this one. Well, guys, it's been a pleasure of joining uh, you guys, obviously being dragged in here for the Drivers Only broadcast. Uh, any last comments you'd like to say before we end this out? Uh, well, thank you, uh, Kid Boy, for the opportunity. I had a lot of fun. I don't know about these guys, but I assume they had a lot of fun, too. Um, and, uh, uh, hopefully I can get the opportunity to do this again, but uh, again, very fun. Yeah, definitely. Honestly, I can't. Oops, sorry. You can go ahead, Joe. <laughs> uh, this was honestly, I was kind of nervous about this, considering uh, I'm kind of like an MRN kind of commentator, but this was a great opportunity. Really hope to do it again, not just for a driver's only broadcast, but for maybe a specific series again. But it was really good. I uh, can't thank Zeke enough for letting me do this and I hope to do it again sometime alright man uh, Charlie's currently muted uh, I don't know if he has that there for his oh there he is Charlie Hi, uh, to say? yeah that was a lot of fun uh, I, this is my second time doing this so the first time it was the super late model race at, at Bristol and that was a really fun race to do as well so um, yeah it was a lot of fun uh, I appreciate uh, all you guys doing this with me and uh everyone in the YouTube chat who's, who came out to watch. So it uh, means a lot to us and to uh, Zeke, of course, for running this entire thing. So uh, all the support to him. So, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. How about you, Klein? Any uh, last comments? Whoops. 
<laughs> Thank you, Klein. <laughs> well, Klein's currently having issues right now, I guess. You know, whatever. We'll try to get that to Klein. And, oh, well, there he is. Uh, sorry about that. Um, well, I'd like to thank you guys for uh, letting us in the booth. Real damn pleasure. All right, by 10-4. And with that being said, uh, thank you all for tuning us in for tonight's Max Speed TV broadcast here for the New Smyrna 80. Brandon never sells out the finale. Aaron Mulrooney comes out up top. And with that, uh, we will be live in a couple of weeks on this time slot where we go green for the Legend Series coming out Daytona. I'm sure all these other drivers are excited for that and still get out on the bumpy side of Daytona. But with that being said, uh, thank you all, as I said, for tuning in for this broadcast. My name is Ezekiel Reyes. Uh, my name is Hunter Up. I'm Joe Berge. That's Charlie Charlie Byer. I'm Charlie Byer. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, I was a bit messy, but whatever. Thank you all for joining us for tonight's broadcast. We will see you maybe in a week or so once we go green on the Monza side of things, where we go green for the shootout race. There will be a payout there. I'm excited to see on who will call, who will all come out up top of that big Monza race. But with that. Thank you all for watching. We're signing out.